while we were once running back haters in dynasty i would say i i mean i would i would say that i was definitely shying away from running backs in the early rounds of startup drafts we've gotten to a point now where the entire dynasty community is zigging so what do we do we, we zag, zag baby we're gonna zag and we're gonna talk about running backs in your startups in your dynasty leagues why they might win you a league and why there are actually some pretty good values who they are who you should be targeting how your running back strategy should work in a super flex dynasty league do us a favor show some support and make sure you like this video and make sure you're subscribed we're trying to get to 5k by opening day so that's in september we're gonna do it if you subscribe so make sure you do we appreciate you guys supporting us and we are going to give you some good content today with running backs so from a running back perspective i like i said it, it, we went through a like complete 180 of running back strategy in Dynasty because last year you had Najee Harris going at the tail end of the first, early second. DeAndre Swift. Hold, I mean, the, the further we get away from that, the worse it sounds. Oh, it's bad. DeAndre Swift. I took a DeAndre Swift that early last year. I mean, it was the worst mistake I've ever made. He was going at the one-two turn. Um, yeah, that was really bad. So because of that, dynasty managers have over adjusted a little bit because you have a lot of running backs in dynasty now that are either a very good values at, at a young age that still aren't on a second contract. Uh, some of them are rookies now that can, are actually really good values. Uh, some of them are very old that people are just not touching at all. And then you have Tony Pollard, who's actually a bad value because he's old and people are drafting him in the fifth round. Yep. But outside of Tony Pollard and outside of, you know, Cam Akers, there's not a ton of bad values at running back right now. And we'll go through them today and we're going to kind of we're going to kind of tell you, you know, which ones maybe you shouldn't be targeting, but at the same time, we're going to start at the top and 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 I want to say this, a strategy that you still could do in Superflex League because people are shorting running back so much, a lot of the strategy um, you can go no running back, no running back and end up with some crazy running backs on your team. There's some really good values in the later rounds. And you're talking about the ninth to 12th round. And when you're looking at the, even Derrick Henry in the seventh round, but when you're looking at the ninth to 12th round, you're talking about guys like James Conner. James Conner, although beyond this year, we don't know. If you're paying a 12th round startup pick for James Conner and he's going to get pretty much all of the valuable carries in an offense next year, in an offense where Kyler Murray is not probably going to play a whole lot, an offense where they are actually looking like they're rebuilding, actually they're definitely looking like they're rebuilding, when you're talking about James Conner in that offense, James Conner, you know, given that he stays healthy, he should be a very good value there. Let's talk about Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones uh, yep. is a guy, you know, in Green Bay. You saw last year him playing with A.J. Dillon. Everybody thought he was dead. Uh, Aaron Jones is a guy the Packers very much like and respect. They've kept him on the roster for a reason, and they're going to continue to give him workloads. What other later round backs come to mind when you think of going no running back in, in your startup and then getting these running backs that produce a lot in later rounds? I think that, I think there are... I mean, a significant amount, but... Well, I mean, specifically, one that we've been on heavily recently is Miles Sanders. Like ninth round. Yeah. I mean, he last year, he was an RB1. He flashed just on the ground. He had, a, I believe he had over 1,000 yards. He had 11 touchdowns all on the ground. And, and like I said, he was an RB1. I, f I feel like he was an RB11 overall. And he was good. He costs next to nothing right now. He's on a four-year contract. He's a Carolina. better investment than so many of these guys here. He's... Like, you can go no running back and get a running back who is going to be on a bad team, who is on a four-year deal, who was on one of the... I mean, they the Eagles passed the ball a fair amount, a fair amount last year. And, and he still had 1,200 and yards. And he still was... 1,269? Yeah. Nice. Nice. I mean, that's a nice amount. So... You look at Miles Sanders. I mean, you can you can cherry pick the talent at wide receiver and quarterback up in the earlier rounds of your startups, and still go no running back and get starting like running backs on deals. Let's talk about. I mean, Dalvin Cook. Oh, Dalvin Cook. Although I don't like him in dynasty from a value perspective, nobody does. So you can get him now past the twelfth round. Yeah, you can get him for a late second right now. And mark our words, he is going to sign somewhere, and when he does, his value will go up. How much will he produce? I don't know, but Dalvin Cook, while he was very inefficient last year, he was very bad in short yard situations, Dalvin Cook still did produce a little bit from a fantasy perspective. He still does have a little bit of juice in him, especially from the receiving game. And he's somebody that you're getting like past the 11th round. Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara, he has a lot of issues right now, but with Alvin Kamara, he's being drafted behind Cortland Sutton right now. Yep. Cortland, Cortland Sutton. Sutton. I mean, that is horrible. 
He, Alvin Kamara could not play for half the season, and he still should be more valuable. He could he could miss an entire year, and he, in my opinion, should still be more valuable than Cortland Sutton. Joe Mixon is a guy that has slid down into the ninth or tenth round. Joe Mixon is still on the Bengals, by the way. He did not get cut. I think the fact that he's not been cut yet should tell you a lot, too. Because Joe Mixon's the guy that's produced as an RB1 for, I mean, a couple of years now, I think. So, going back to that elite offense, assuming he's, I mean, he's not, hey, again, he has not gotten cut. Joe Mixon, <laughs> there are so many dang running backs. And again, this is a result of people basically overcorrecting. People are scared to draft running backs now. Um, so, you can go no running back and you can get some starting caliber running backs. Some guys that, I mean honestly, are just values for one reason or another in the later rounds of your startup drafts. Now, on the other hand, and I want you to talk about this a little bit, in the, I mean, Bijan, let's talk, talk about Bijan real quick. Bijan is a good investment at the end of the first, at the turn. He's good there. His value's good there. He's good. The problem is, right now, I have DLF Fantasy ADP pulled up right now. Nice. Right now. DLF. Bijan Robinson is being drafted as the RB1. Ninth overall. No, 10th overall. I'm sorry. Ahead of Jamar Chase. Ahead of Justin Fields? Yeah, ahead of... That was the running back. Ahead of, no, not ahead <laughs> of Justin kidding. Fields. But he is being drafted ahead of Jamar Chase, ahead of Deshaun Watson, ahead of Kyler Murray. So, yes, th- this is saying running backs are a good value, but Bijan Robinson should not be going over, especially right there, Jamar Chase. Go oh, on. no, 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 no. Is he seriously ahead of Jamar Chase on this? Yes. Okay, no. Not that in the month no, of but, in but the month where we've of April. seen him go it, behind Jamar Chase, but maybe ahead of Justin Fields, uh, Deshaun Watson. Like I'm, I'm gonna take him there again. We talked about this in some of our other videos. He's going, you know, to a team that ran the ball more than any other team. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And he's the best running the back. The Falcons ran it five hundred and sixty nine times last year. Fifty nine. Oh, dang it! <laughs> I was gonna make another nice joke. Yeah, that's all right. I read it wrong. I would have made that. I would have made that joke last week had you had it been mm-hmm. that, but. But you, to your point, but, they, they ran the ball the most. And that's not... The team that ran it the second most was the Chicago Bears. Justin Fields was 160 of those rushing attempts. The Falcons are going to run it out the wazoo next year. Yep. And Bijan Robinson is going to be, the day he starts, one of the best running backs in the league. He might have... I mean, he... I my, What are my expectations for him? Not high, but he might have 20 points per game next year. Like, legitimately. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. And and the thing is, there's there's a big drop off when you're looking at running backs from the guys who produce to the guys who do not produce. Yep. And when you're getting when you're getting one of the 17 running backs that averaged over 12 points per game last year, I'm going to have to I'll fact check that in a second. There's also probably 30 if not more wide receivers who did the same thing over 17 points per game. There's not very many running backs that you can get that are going to produce so when you're not starting one of those guys at the top that's giving you 15, 16, 17 points per game, everyone else in your league is going to have a very big edge. They're going to have a leg up over you, and it's going to make it very hard for you to win. Like You look at it with tight ends, the teams that have Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, they have a, they have a huge advantage over everyone else. You do not want to get caught lacking. You cannot win just with wide receivers, and, it, and it's better for your long-term value. But if you're trying to win this year, I'm sorry, you're going to have to invest in those running backs, and we're saying... Some of the best investments right now are following past the 10th round. Yeah. You can get these old guys who have been giving you 14 or 15 points per or, game in the last few years, and they might do it again, and well, they're very cheap. Or even Roshan Johnson, who's a young guy you're getting in the 11th round. Like, yeah. there are young guys there, too. And then looking past B. John Robinson, uh, Brees Hall and Jonathan Taylor, if they're going in the—I mean, they have been falling at the end of the second. Yes, pretty please. There especially, yes, Christian McCaffrey in the middle of the third, and honestly, Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs is a top five dynasty running back, and he's going in the mid. I mean, he if he does what the Lions expect him to do, he should he will be going higher than that next year. Um, that gives him a lot of room to grow from a value perspective, and that's really what you have to be worried about with running backs. Uh, Saquon Barkley, a guy that's going to get a four year deal next year, probably on a new team, so it means his value is going to go back up when he gets traded. He's going like. The beginning of the fourth, and same with Austin Eckler. I mean, who's not a who's not, Austin Eckler's not a screaming value, but he's not a bad value. Josh Jacobs, a guy again that scored twenty points a game last year, end of the fourth. Etienne and Walker. Now those are the guys. I'm like, are they good values? Nah, probably not yet because they haven't necessarily. Uh, Kenneth Walker's got the question about Charbonnet. 
ETN's got the question about number one, Tanks Bigsby. Number two, he actually was kind of mid last year when you look at it from a fantasy perspective. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, Javante Williams was going, he was another guy going in the second round last year. He's going in the fifth or sixth round this year. Najee Harris was going in the second round. He should be going higher than the fifth round. He's going in the fifth round. Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb is going consistently in the sixth and seventh round last year, and he doesn't, you guys, he does not have Kareem Hunt this year. Deshaun Watson's not taking everything from Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb's a really, really good running back for a contending team this year. You don't have to invest super high in him. You know his value is going to drop after this year, but you know he's going to produce as well. I mean, obviously you're taking that. You chance, might but. be able to get Nick Chubb for two seconds, and that and that's crazy. I'm going to go actually, actually after this video. I'm going to go offer that in leagues. DeAndre Swift is a guy you should be getting out on. He just is. Tony Pollard's a guy you should be getting out on. So there are some guys in the fifth, sixth round. Like if you're going to take your running backs. Take the hyper-productive ones in the third and fourth round. That seems to be the sweet spot. You can get 20 points per game. And sometimes 24 years old, 25 years old. Derrick Henry is still giving you 19 points per game. And you're getting him in the sixth or seventh round. Yeah. Hops. Yeah. Um, we talked about Joe Mixon, but and we talked about Miles Sanders. So those are the those are gonna be the main guys here. But but what's let's as we reel this in. The dynasty community, like we said at the beginning, has zigged with running backs. Running backs are now a good good investment. I mean, th there are, again, J the Jameer Gibbs, even Jonathan Taylor and Brees Hall, Javante Williams, Najee Harris, Travis Etienne and Kenneth Walker, could, you could put in that as well. J.K. Dobbins you could put in there. These are all candidates to actually go up in value. Up. Like, gain value. And while that's seemingly impossible with running backs, it does happen. I mean... Saquon Barkley increased his value year over year, right? Didn't he? He was going in the he was going in the same spot last year. Well, he had a really bad year, and then this year came it, out. That's came what I'm saying. And came he back actually, and he production. actually like maintained or increased his value, and he's and he's already yes. 25. Yeah, he might be 26. 26. But that's because Saquon Barkley gave you 17, 8 points per game after being almost irrelevant the year. But before. I think I think to that point, Brees Hall. Etienne Walker, all those guys I named could give you that many points. They all have that. Ceiling. Oh yes, it's, yeah. And, and so again, you're not you're not even you're not only talking about taking a risk on a guy that could maintain their value. These guys actually have potential to increase their value. And so running th backs can that makes them semi sound investments sometimes. Running backs can absolutely be ultra producers. You don't see wide receivers often giving you twenty two plus points per game. Just three years ago, Dalvin Cook and Alvin Kamara both averaged 25 points per game. Christian McCaffrey averaged like 28 or 29 points per game. Like, don't forget that these guys existed well within a league lifetime even. I mean, just, just a few years ago, running backs were the key to winning your leagues, and, and it's probably they still not— They can be. There's a new wave of running backs coming in. These guys are young, and if they're going to be utilized by their teams, there's several that have the ceiling to do that again. Absolutely. And look, I'm getting Derrick Henry in the seventh round. He's dying on my roster. He's dying on my roster. So often in Dynasty, we get so caught up in selling a year early. Selling, And I say this all the time, but if everybody sells a year early, you're not actually sold, selling a year early. You're selling at the same time as everybody else. They would have sold Derrick Henry three years ago. And they have been. And that's why Derrick Henry's been such... I mean, Derrick Henry... Guys, points win leagues. Derrick Henry scores points. Derrick Henry is old, and so people don't like him. But if you want to win, draft a Derrick Henry. Draft a Nick Chubb. Right? I, I mean, it's just, it's right there for the taking. But we don't, we, you know, we shy away from Derrick Henry because we want to go draft DJ Moore. We, we are, we are infatuated with Jamison Williams. I mean, would you rather have Jamison Williams, who hasn't even done anything of significance? He scored a 40 yard of, touchdown. I, Okay, my my bad. <laughs> Derrick Henry. I mean, Derrick Henry, guys. You're talking about 2,000 rush yards in one season. The RB4 last year. A guy that we, we see. I mean, I don't think he's slowing down. The injury last year wasn't something that was like, okay, here he goes. He's going to go off this cliff. He, he is one of one. We're taking, you know, guys like even, I don't know. I'm trying to think of more examples. I mean, J.K. Dobbins in this mock went ahead of Derrick Henry. That That's... DeAndre Swift. So DeAndre Swift in this mock went ahead of Derrick Henry. Don't be afraid to take running backs. That's that's the that's the and and running backs are league winners, especially now. And not only all that, some of these running backs can be good investments. And so 
a lot of the risk, a lot of the reason people weren't taking running backs is because they realized last year the risk that you have with taking running backs that high. First of all, no running backs are going as high as they were last year. Bijan Robinson, who is 10 times the prospect that Najee Harris was and DeAndre Swift, is going at the same spot that they were. So the market has over-adjusted. Don't be afraid to buy running backs. The risk that was there is is negated by a, a significant amount. Now they are league winners and they're actually decent investments. And some of these guys, like I said, just need to die on your roster. Running backs are your friend. They score points and you should be getting more of them in Dynasty. We hope that helps. Um, again, I, I don't, you can disagree with that. I don't know how you can. I, I, some of these guys are just, are just too good of values from a point perspective. So in our opinion, like I said, these running backs are, are safer than they had been in the past. So do us a favor. Make sure you show some support. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We've got content like this strategy content coming out all off season. Uh, we're trying to give you accurate dynasty research and analysis. So we'd appreciate it if you subscribe as well. We're trying to get to 5K before opening day. So make sure you subscribe to help us hit our goal. We really appreciate it. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you later.